Yeah, so I just, I just wanted to start off. Uh, you recognize as an apostle of prayer in America, Papa Dutch. Uh, please share with us your story about how God blessed you with a burden of prayer <clears throat> and a vision of awakening for America and where that has led you up until today. You know, it started uh, way back, uh, late 90s, and then really culminated around 2000. I had several very in-depth, strong impactful encounters with the Lord. Uh, a, a couple of a, a couple of them lasted for about three hours. Wow. And I realized looking back that it was the process. You know, I had asked God to give me his heart for the nation. Uh, and I knew he was he was doing that. But he, he did it gradually over about a four or five year season from around 1995 or six mm -hmm. up until 2000. But in 2000, I had a powerful visitation from the Lord. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I, I was headed to the podium to speak. When I got to the platform, I became dizzy and I yeah. thought, Maybe I was sick or having a some kind of an attack, but then I realized very quickly this is this is the Lord. But it was such a wave of of power that I became disoriented for a minute and dizzy, and then I began to weep. Mm -hmm. And they actually shut. Cece came up and closed the service and said, "I don't know what's going on with him, but I know <laughs> it's God, and I know what He would want us to do." So they emptied the building, locked the doors, put some worship on, and left me by myself. Wow! <laughs> with the Lord, and and you know, it was so powerful. I can still feel what I did. This happens to me almost every time I talk about it, uh, mm -hmm. because for about three hours, the Lord just downloaded to me his heart for America. And, and I wept for three and a half hours. And I often say, uh, I, I feel like I wept with him. I felt like God was weeping over America. And, and, and at one point it became so powerful, uh, not in a good, you not in a wonderful edifying way, but in a, an mm -hmm. overcoming way, mm -hmm. overwhelming. I actually thought I was gonna die. I, I, I found myself begging God just to, to take this off of me. It was going to kill me. And I realized uh -huh. uh, I couldn't handle, I couldn't carry what he could carry, but he was giving me a portion of it. Mm -hmm. And so after about three and a half hours, I realized that he had finished mantling me for the nation. One of the things he said to me during that three hours was, I must have America. Wow. And, he, mm -hmm. and I knew... I knew it was it was sort of a request because by then I knew that God worked through the prayers of his people and the yeah. cooperation of his people. And he doesn't do things in spite of us. He does things with us and through us on the earth. So I knew he was saying, I, I must have a people that will cooperate with me because he said, I must have this nation. It wasn't it wasn't, you know, some people get a little nervous when I talk about, is he just being nationalistic or is he exalting America? It wasn't anything like that. It was, he said, because of what I want to do around the world yeah. and the harvest that, that I'm going to, to reap around the world, I must have this nation. So it wasn't just about America, but my assignment was going to be America. Yeah. And from that day, I've, I've been different. I, I, I had to learn to carry it. You know, I, I, for, for weeks, I, I just look at an American flag and I wow. just lose it. And sometimes I have to pull off the road and just weep. And sometimes it comes and goes, guys, you know, like right now, I don't do this in every interview, but sometimes it just happens, you know, I just feel it all over again. And so then he, then he taught me how to carry it because it was overwhelming me for a few weeks. And I said, I can't carry this. And, and he said, I'm going to teach you how to carry it. So it was a, it was a, it was a remarkable time. I've, I've never looked back. I've never once questioned in, in the, in the last 20 years since that happened, his heart for America. I've never questioned what he wants to do and what he intends to do. And as I have journeyed with him in this 20 years, I've become 1000% convinced that it's going to happen. In other words, there is a praying church. Mm -hmm. There is a, there, he has a people that have been listening and have been obeying. He never needs the majority. 
He only needs a remnant. And there is a praying remnant. There is a fasting, uh, worshiping remnant of people that are saying, whatever it takes, we're going to see this happen. And we're moving toward this and God's going to do it. There's going to be a third great greatest awakening in America is going to touch the world. It's going to be around the world. It's just going to be our third. <laughs> Some yeah. right. be the first. Yeah. But it's going to be a worldwide revival. Yeah. And uh, so I know we're going to talk about hope, and I know I'm getting ahead, but I just tell people right now, don't be distracted by what's happening. Don't get focused on what the enemy's doing. Because right. mm -hmm. he's trying to stop what God's doing. It's not going to happen. We're going to see this third great awakening. That's right. We believe it. Yeah. And just to, just to throw a, a, a side question in there, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, you talk about a remnant, right? And and in your travels, I know we really haven't been traveling since COVID and all the lockdowns and everything, but in all of your interviews and talking with people behind the scenes, how do you see that remnant right now? Are they strong? Are they, are they weak? Are they failing? How, how do you view the remnant body of Christ rising up right now? Well, I, I <clears throat> good, but and let me let me just say that that I know the church as a whole. There are huge facets of the church that are discouraged and distracted by this, mm -hmm. and they're that mm -hmm. sleeping giant that's overwhelmed with hopelessness that you saw last week. And I have mm -hmm. seen some of that even on the praying church, mm -hmm. but I see another group of people uh, that are that are really listening to the Lord, uh, and I would say, as you guys do, as, as I do, and some of the people I run with, and even though they are very concerned and not at all in denial, they are not uh, discouraged or hopeless. Yeah. Uh, there is a group that has withstood the onslaught and has stayed strong in faith. I think what God wants to do now and what he wants to do through through. Uh, programs, you know, uh, like this and what you guys talked about last week is say to, to others, Hey, listen, God, God wasn't taken by surprise and yeah. he, he's gonna, he, he's gonna do this. So I think there is a group that has to be awakened to, to hope again, but I think there's another group that is interceding and carrying the others. If I can say there's a remnant of the right. remnant mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. is still strong. Yeah. So in this in this time of, you know, there's so many prophetic words, dreams that are being released concerning the nation. And, and we can say that, you know, there there are um, messages that are being released kind of all ends of the spectrum. But we, we want to hear as as an apostle, you know, over America and someone who has um, carried a burden for this nation like no one else that I know, yeah. you know, or maybe very few others. Um, what what is it that the Lord has been showing you in terms of where we are in His prophetic timeline? Well, I, th I think you know we back up to the first of the year. You know, when prophets like Chuck Pierce, friend of mine, he he he, and even late last year. He began to get words about this plague, although he didn't have the name of it. And I know he wasn't the only one. So, uh, you know, God obviously hasn't been caught off guard. He, and I don't think for a minute that he has caused this plague to come on this pandemic. But at the same time, just, just as he said to Joseph, I have a plan. The enemy has a plan. I have a plan. And it became clear to me as I listened to Chuck and prayed into this that, that God was going to use this as a, as a reset. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've been receiving dreams. I've, I've never had a season in my life. And I, I don't get most of them myself. I have prophets that I'm, several prophets that I'm very close to. Uh, and and they, they are frequently now receiving dreams for the nation that involve me and involve others. And it's almost like the Lord has just since the first of the year been uh, going overboard to make sure uh -huh. that I stay encouraged, that I know where we're headed with this, that I, that I keep, he keeps reminding me what he's going to do. And, 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 and 
he's distracting me so that I don't get distracted. <laughs> and so it's good. But but so the COVID thing, I knew I knew it from Chuck and others that that this was not going to 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 ultimately uh, interrupt what God's plan was. But on but to the contrary, God would be using it as a reset of of of, of um, the church. So He's made us. He's He's actually forced the church along with everyone else to slow down yeah. and listen to him. They can't, can't rely on their programs and their methods and yeah. their, you know, 10 year plan. They had to just, what a novel thought, sit back and listen <laughs> and say, what are you saying right now, Lord? And yeah. so the prophetic church is having to be the prophetic church and the apostolic church he is demanding that we be the apostolic church. And now we're having to do what we've taught. And so what that has done is that has caused us to back up and say, what are you saying right now? And so the timing uh, of this was we felt like by Passover, breakthrough would begin. And then many of us felt that by Pentecost, we would literally be moving into this new uh, season. And I think we have moved into a new era uh, and that God is now going to use the disillusionment and the the concern. You know, there's nothing like a, a nice um, pandemic and season where the nation is on fire to get people's attention. And yeah. I'm not for a minute again saying God caused that, right. but it awakens people to a sense of desperation mm -hmm. and they right. turn to God and they say, and, and they say, Hey, w what's going on here and what can we do about it? And I, I see the nation right now, pretty much the same place that we were in the sixties when the uh, charismatic movement began and the Jesus people movement began. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was the, the same things were happening minus the pandemic. There was great unrest. There was a, 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 a previous wave of the civil rights movement. And then there was a disillusioned young generation and they were doing exactly what they're doing now. They were rioting. They were burning buildings. They were taking over campuses. It was a, it was a bad time, but God used it to to awaken and he used it to get people uh, out of a slumber state of hey everything's fine everything's great and, and and get their attention to where the church began to cry out to him so i believe that's where we are now i believe the rest of this year actually the reset will continue i think the warfare will be great over the elections uh, i think that that we have to per persevere through the season but we can't get distracted by the pandemic. We can't get distracted by what Satan is doing right now because he's trying to he's trying to bring discouragement so that he can change God's timing. Mm -hmm. Daniel seven. If he can change the times and seasons by discouraging the church, i.e., your dream, then he can stop what God wants to do. So this is good that we're talking about it and you're talking about it because we, we're just not going to let that happen. We're not going to let the right. discouragement come in. We're not going to let the, the media tell us that we're losing and that we can't, we're not, that the turnaround is going to stop. It's not going to stop. God is recalibrating our nation. He's recalibrating the church. He has to start there. There's a reset taking place. And I believe by the end of this year, then that we're going to see what God's plan was through the whole thing. And we're going to be moving into a full fledged revival. Yes. Yeah.